Jeff, fix your hair. Yeah. Jeff, Jeff is visiting from, uh, from he trains in New Jersey. Jeff, why don't you give a shout out to your academy? Shout out to all the folks at Jardin BJJ, Vauxhall, New Jersey. Yeah, tell them what they need to do on YouTube. They need to like, share, subscribe. Yeah, like, share, subscribe, check the video description, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, everything. Side, can I have you on the side? So uh, there's different variations of this. And uh, what I want to be able to do is almost combo these things up so that once you start trying to attack, like you're aggressively trying to get them. This is what you're really trying to do is trying to get them up on their side to a 45 position. Because at 45s, then the angles of the arteries, let's say I go into a guillotine. Uh, let's back Ethan up for a second. If I go into a guillotine, the arteries are sitting really well for me to catch here, catch here. Also, the arms spin to the back, all these things. He also wants to turn also to the side because he would like to try to recover in some manner or he'd like to invert, bring these legs, depending on where I am. He'll try to read where I am. Um, he also might want to try to stand up, right? But I would love to get him to his side so I can expose his back or the back quadrants. So let's just keep it really simple in the beginning. I had been going over this guy where you were coming underneath here and bringing this guy up off the jawline, this, these three things kind of brought him up to the side. Then I made this far side wedge so he wouldn't pull back. I had this one goal of getting the leg over so that I had two wedges on this side and then I could start attacking this arm. So then I could let go of that wedge because I had a wedge up here. So I'll describe it really, I just described it, but I'll just show it really quick. I brought him up to a 45, a windshield wiper, my angle pretty well. I'm, I throw this wedge over the top just so that I don't get them, because he's going to be pulling back these hips. And I just start coming around so that I can make this wedge on the other side with this leg. And now there's the opportunity to transfer these hands. And then what I told you was, if you go back into those videos, I told you that we weren't going to flip our hands because we were only gonna go into an arm bar when we fell back, because if I lace through with this hand, it's because I was giving myself the option to finish a Kimura, right? Or have better control when I sat back, or potentially go to a gift wrap. A lot of things, like depending on how you're thinking or what your percentages are on the, on the, on the moves that you know, okay? So I told you this whole explanation, but we're gonna do this guy first, okay? Where you're here, that's different, okay? When you pull him up, you can pull him up, but now you don't have the same control, okay? Because when here, when you pulled him up, if Ethan started to keep rotating, I'm in the way, okay? This way, I'm not in the way. Because when I bring him up, there's the opportunity. He won't stop coming, okay? And I don't have the same control, but I'm also, there's an issue with me now, is that I do have some level of control that I can slow him down, but when I make the turn on the other side, my hand is in the way to lace through, right? So I can't get under there, okay? I don't even have the other one. I'm stuck in between both, okay? So I'm gonna turn him this, I'll turn him both ways so everybody could see. You brought him up this way, okay? And now I'm coming over the top, but I'm coming over the top to grab this elbow because I still want my knee pinching. Right, because I want to be able to, and this will depend on what you like to do, okay? I'm perfectly fine with you holding this elbow, inserting backwards through this line, and then coming up onto that arm bar that we talked about. But I don't have a Kimura, because I know it's an advanced class, but then some people uh, mess up the grips. This hand, the hand that's by that hip, is your pushing hand to break here. But I just inserted backwards because I came over the top this way. I brought him up like this, whether by the neckline or this grab, and instead, like, there was no, re there was no way for me to get my hand through, but I reached for the f bottom elbow. So now I have a choice. I can open this up, right, and, or, I'm sorry, sorry about that. I, I am assuming he's closed up in bottles, so I'm going to go in backwards and I can take that arm. But I'm going to ask you that we do a couple of different combos on this. I w right now have control of the situation that I could potentially spin to the backside. But I'm going to say, I'm not going to, I'm actually, this is how you normally would be with knees down. Because I'm sitting like this is only because I'd like everybody to be able to see what I'm doing. So don't let me see you sit like that. That's not why the move does it. The move is a knee pinch. You're squeezing and holding, holding this, squeezing this trying to prevent his turn. So there's two things. So my legs not up in the air. 
I brought this hand in backwards, but that's not what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to be able to, now you pause them at this 45, where you're squeezing your kneecaps together, same principle that we did before. Now I'm going to flip this grip, and now I'm going to slide through backwards. So I'm going to ask you to do a couple of variations of this, okay? You're going to have three, okay? First one, you're just going to take this Kimura, you're going to make a wedge, you're going to pick this leg up so that you can generate some power off this back leg, pull away and finish, okay? Second one, you're here and you can't pull away, but you pick this leg up, so I'm just going to slide the leg down to the hip. Reason I slide the hip down, because when I fall back, I don't want you rolling on top of me, okay? Where I'm the now I'm stacked underneath. So when you came here, you brought the leg up so that I can flip this grip and now turn this into an arm bar, okay? And then I'm going to ask you to do a third one, okay? Because you, you should be able to pick and choose. Only thing I'm going to do different now is just clear his head on this side, and I'm going to windshield wiper my legs. So now, right now, you see my legs all straight. They're going to windshield wiper this way, and I'm going to drop to collect the head. Once I drop to collect the head, I step over with this foot. So I have my first insertion. I'm not going to go ask you to go further than that. We'll take it further. One will we go back, one will we drive this way. I'll do it again. Okay, so you brought him up, okay, with one goal. If you miss the elbow, it doesn't matter. If I were to miss this elbow and Ethan were to go to turtle, who cares? I'm spinning right here, taking this quadrant to dominate this sector right here. So don't worry if you miss the elbow. I told you why you brought him up. The game is to submit your partner. That's the game. Okay, so we're actively, or if you're losing on points in an IBJJ set, or in a competition, or a submission only, you gotta press the action, man. You can't sit there holding a man in side control. You gotta take it to him. So now you brought him up like this, right? You brought him up, your hands in there, and that's usually how they are, because they're all bottled up like this, trying to survive, or they think that their victory is laying there and they didn't get submitted, and they walk out of here hot. Nobody submitted me. Okay, I know, but you would have got killed in a real fight, like so. Fight to turn, man. Fight to turn and get up. So you're here. You brought him up. Okay? I take this step over, but instead of making this wedge, as I come over, I catch the bottom elbow. I'm nice and tight. I'm pinching my kneecaps really tight. I open up this pocket. I insert backwards, right? And now I have my Kimura. I lift my leg to generate some power. I pull it away before I come back on the finish, and I turn. I'm not finishing off the finish. You should finish off that finish. If you don't know, ask me. I'll explain it because this is not a real finish going like this, okay? On the second one, so we go Kimura. On the second one, I went, Ugh, this guy's holding on for dear life. I can't separate these hands. I'm going to switch it to an arm bar. I'm going to slide my leg down to his hip so he can't roll up on top of me. I flip my, le my legs, throw my leg over. I'm on two, okay? On the third one, we're doing everything exactly the same. Brought him up, dropped the elbow, I'm here, open up the pocket, slide through, and I go, uh-uh, I want, I want to take this guy's back, I'm determined to choke you out, okay? My leg drops, and now both of them are straight. This leg is now on this side of the head, only thing I want to do is windshield wiper my legs. So just like you see me, I'll stay up, my legs are just going to windshield wiper, I think you see them on the back side? So everybody could see them. So the head just got clear to this point. Only thing I'm going to do is just windshield wipe him the other way. So now this instep is mirrored at, this, at the back shoulder line right here. As I was doing it, I was always here. Okay, so the only thing I'm doing is just dropping over his head with my bicep, and now I've collected his skull. Okay, and now this leg is coming up to, th th I'm sorry, to throw over the top into this pocket. It's not the end of the world if you can't get it over the top to put it in here. You can always bring him back and then catch him on the fallback because he won't be able to blow this pocket up because you control this elbow. So you had three versions of it. You had a Kimura, you had an arm bar, and you had a gift wrap. I'm asking you to not do it fast, but that they be precise and precision. Everything was based off of this knee pinch. So when this leg was squeezing and, and holding the shoulder girdle, there's a reason for that. Because this kneecap is perfectly set that if you had to spin it back here, also, when you take this leg out, it's to just clear the back of the skull. Because I do, put these arms down. When this leg was here and it cleared right here, 
only thing I want is I want full connection that I never left you. So when we went on a windshield, there should be constant feel of his body. I should be able to understand exactly what he's doing. Because later on, if I pull him back this way, and now we're falling on the land high, I want to be ready to take this arm out of the equation, or go into a reverse triangle, or be able to drop this shoulder. Put the hands together. Or be able to drop this shoulder. Let me have you have a second. Or be able to, from here, just drop the shoulder down so that I go back into another set on the arm bar in the other way. So I'm ready, set. So I'm asking you to feel it, understand what you're doing. You don't have to do it hard, but do it precise. Okay, guys, let's partner up. Let's rock. I'm go like this or whatever, man. You just don't want to go that way. I get it. And now you think that we're going to play this game of survival now. So now i got to get aggressive with you, okay? We're going to play it two different ways, right? Yeah. We're gonna keep his hands like this so that I, this is easy for everybody to watch. I'm already on this side. If the hands were like this, I'd make a small transfer to this side and take it back this way. Whatever the top hand is, okay? I'm not gonna fight you strength for strength. I'll, tell you, I'll show you two different ways. One's a little bit, I wouldn't say dirty. It's just press the action. You wanna sit there like this and you don't wanna fight back, then we gotta press the action. If you wanna fight, well we can play the game of exchanging, then we play it a different way. I'll explain what I mean right now, okay? I'm like this. Okay, and you don't want to move. So I take my hand here and I grab onto this wrist, right? Two different ways. If you are much stronger than him, obviously I'm just going to back out of the pocket because I basically don't mind if you come this way. I still, if you come this way, turn this way, I'm back on the same move again, right? But we play in the game that you don't want to really go anywhere, so we got to press this action a little bit. So I take my hand and I'll show you two different ways of it. If you are much stronger, you're just going to angle yourself so that you affect the lateral, the rear deltoid, very weak muscle. So I'm not affecting the lat, your pectorals, your thigh, none of that. Okay? All I'm doing is sliding my thumb underneath your wrist. And I'm going to start pushing this out. If you're not strong enough, you're going to go, whoa, this guy's really strong. Okay. I understand. So now I got to drop this guy. Okay, now I'm going to take both of them and I'm going to get aggressive. I'm going to put my hand on, on your uh, knee on belly and I'm going to angle myself that all my body weight drop on this with one goal. Then I start pushing this thing out. And if you don't want to do that one, I get it. So I go, okay, so this isn't working. Back to this guy. Now I flip my legs. I'm on this perfect, um, I wouldn't say perfect, but I got a perfect cover of this body and body. So now if you do turn in, I'm going to be wedged underneath you. Okay. But I understand, you don't want to go either way. So I take my back leg and I put it at your jawline. And now I start dropping my leg on it. And now we go over again. And now I'm back on these insertions. I showed you three different ways. I showed you a very nice way, right? Where you just had one hand, okay? But now you say, he's too strong for me. Big difference in size and strength. Okay, so I need a secondary hand. What's the big deal if he over rotates? I'm like this. And now I'm like this, and I go, okay, so I'm dropping an A3 over rotates this way. Okay, so keep going, sir. Right? Okay, I'm perfectly lined up to line up right there. Perfect set, right? So who cares if you go the other way? You would have given me that back quadrant. Even though I'm sitting up here, that's the guy I'm going to take when you go over on the rotation. So no problem with that one, right? Okay. So now you say to me, hmm, couldn't do either one. I couldn't get this guy up like this. Okay, so I go back to this guy. Don't let go of my grips, drop my legs, but this guy is going to mirror right here, okay? And I want this mirror for a reason, because in case you come up, I want to pause the game that I can watch it. And I can also take this far side leg and catch on the other side. But there's got to be a shelf under here. Otherwise, potentially, he can rotate too quick. Not the end of the world, but most likely I'm going to end up in a north-south, and I didn't really want that. I was in a good position. I, had, I really would be trading down if I ended up in north-south. I'm dominant, but I'm north-south with you and Turtle. It's not the same. It's like me, I just traded kings for like tens. I didn't want to do that. So when I was here on this grab, and I said, you know what? None of this is working. You're not moving. So I'm going to drop this guy in here. And now in case you come this way, I'm perfectly set to go back in the first one because my wedges are so tight underneath this elbow that I really only cared about one thing, is dropping this to clear this on this side to reattack on the other side. And I could also drop and take this back to catch that elbow. So I'm not stopping the attacks. I'm just going different progressions. We could go nice, aggressive, super aggressive, like 
you're going to go up. So if you can hold my body weight, and I'm not that big, and I don't believe anybody in here could, as long as I target my body, not that it's any strength, as long as I target my body weight on that jawline and my knee line, I'm going to, that, that's incredibly weak muscles on the neck. So you're going to come up. What I want to do is understand the, the transitions after you make the turn. Okay, so we went back again, right? We went very nicely. One, right, and if it comes up, we go for more. No, I mean, Americana, I'm not a big fan of Americana, only because of the, the dynamics of it. That's why you never see it done at high levels, anymore at least. Um, you're here, you push this out, okay, that one didn't work, okay? We're just gonna go simple Americana. If you're gonna go to simple Americana, just a quick thing, if you're gonna, because I know there's different levels in the room. If you're gonna go to Americana, you don't finish an Americana out here, you suck it in as tight as possible, bring your hips to this line as close as you can to this, hold this hip down, and now start rotating with the back. There's a reason for it. He's gonna be bridging up as high as he can to save this arm. So there's a reason my rotations went this way. Earlier when I was telling you about Kimura's, your rotations were going this way for a reason. You were sprawling, contending this head, making this pocket, turning this way to affect the hips off of this line. So there's a lot of things to generate to rip this. Now I'm sitting here with the arm the other way, and I gotta turn the elbow this way. So there's a reason that I turn my hips this way and hold this hip down as much as I physically can. I'm not gonna have the same rotations, but I don't want, as I'm cranking this this way, and I'm laying fat, flat, he's going to be bridging up as high as possible to save that arm. So i got to understand why my, my line's here. I'm trying my best to rip this. So i got to hold this line. I also have to, spl I have to, um, I have to, um, I'm sorry, I'm drawing a blank on it. I have to sprawl out as flat as I possibly can to prevent as much of a heist as possible. I also understand that if I'm going to, I'm going to spread myself so far out to stop these things from happening high, then I can't think that this arm's going to be out here because then this is going to be short down here. So the reason I bring this so tight to the body is, it will tell you, if I bring this so tight to the body, it wants to tap already. So it shouldn't be out here. There should be no gap. I know it feels like really dangerous. Yeah. Yeah, it feels really dangerous to do if you've done it right. So this thing should be as tight as possible. If it's out here, I'll be short down here, okay? So understand why I'm doing it, right? So I'm gonna ask you to do any one of the versions I just showed. If you forget them, I'll yell them out. So I showed you three different ones. I showed you super nice, I showed you a little bit more aggressive, I showed you super aggressive. In competition, go super aggressive right away. There's no reason for it, we gotta press that action. You're turning, I'm going on the hunt. Most likely it's gonna be this quadrant down here, even though I'm up here, right? Because when you turn, you're gonna go, okay, uh, I'm back on the bottom quadrant, taking my hooks in, throwing this guy over the top. That's most likely what's going to occur, but that's okay. You just expose yourself for four points, and I'd rather have your neck than, a, than a, on the percentage. Man, I'm just traded up from fives to aces if you let me get to that neck instead of going to an Americana. Okay, guys, so let's part up and do it. Let's rock. Americana. 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 Stay right there for me. Okay. When he spoils this leg out, lay back down. Okay. I want this thing as tight to his body as possible, as tight to his body as possible. I want this kneecap, if possibly, to be here for a reason. I want you to leverage yourself out. So I said one, two, three. Those are the three things I want, okay? Let me out for, back out for one second. When you go cranking this elbow like this, like this, he's going to raise this hip to bring the body together. You have to bridge off of this, otherwise I'll tear your shoulder. Yes. Because if you understand, he's got to bring this as a package. Because if he stays low, this is going to rip. So he's got to bring these hips up. So I would love for you to have some form of body weight carrying here. Now, the more I bring this together, the more I don't have to turn. He's already coming up. But from this, he's going to come up a lot. Okay, there's a lot of slack here. So I want to pull this as tight to my body as I can. I want to put this here for a reason because as I'm cranking, he's going to elevate this hip onto this shoulder like this to lift this up. So I want to have body pressure if I can here. I also want to be planked out because I want to suck this in as tight as I can, right? Lastly, as if I can, I always say this, is that I know they show you these locks on the Kimuras. If preferably, once you're going to finish and you're like this, 
I'm not pushing my hand anymore to push this hand, right? I'm here going over the top to grab control of this totally. Because once I come in here, I want to be able to rip this thing apart, right? So if you can, anytime you can go double gripping, go double gripping. I use that silly explanation as like, we just broke down in a car and we have to push it over. So I'll push the car and you push me. Is that how it's going to work? That really wouldn't work too well because you're going to be behind me pushing. How's that working? So it's a stupid analogy, but it's really true. You have a Kimura and you're pushing one hand to push the other hand to push the other hand. Put them on the double grips if you can. So they, you know what? It's a little form of, uh, it's a little increase in, in uh, horsepower, but you're on a crowd. That's why I hate that Americana. So you know what finishes that Americana at a high level anymore. Like years ago, guys didn't know how to bridge. Guys didn't know how to do the finish. Like... Yeah, I get it. Now, when do you see an Americana finish? On a high level? Black to black? Adult? Like, very. I mean, I can't even remember. The last time I think I saw it was, uh, I think the last time I saw it was Sean Alvarez. If people know who Sean Alvarez, he was a legend in here for a long time. One of Henzo's first black belts. One of the first black belts to be uh, with the Sheik in Abu Dhabi. Um, and Sean now has multiple schools in Mexico. But he was, he was in the UFC, fought, like, he was the last guy I saw do a, an Americana at a super high level. So that was uh, 15 years ago. So, so uh, let's, uh, let's grab water. Mal get going happy pill. Those videos were nonstop on how we get behind here, how we insert, how we recover, hip flips, everything. So you should be really kind of coordinated if you read long. If you haven't, if I see all messed up, I'll be yelling at you. You don't watch the happy pill. Okay, guys, so let's do it.